Well, we've enjoyed three fantastic nights already in this year's Greyhound Derby. Um, and the guys steering the ship in charge at Toaster join me now, Andy Lismore and James Chalkley, uh, joint racing managers. And we're going to get the racing office opinion. How are you, Andy? I'm very well, Dave. Yourself? Yeah, I'm, I'm very well. And, and James, yourself? Yeah, all good. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Yeah, I know you've, you're both very, very busy, um, non-stop. I've caught you actually on a day in which you're not racing, incredibly, so I'm sure you probably don't appreciate that. But it's good to see you both and uh, hear from you both. Let's get straight into them. We had 32 first-round heats last week. And, James, the clock would suggest that the, the track was a little bit slower on Thursday um, than it was on Friday and Saturday. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think we made the track. 20 and 30 slow at the beginning and, and, and minus 20 for the rest of the meeting now on Thursday. Uh, back to Friday and Saturday, they were back to normal. So that's, we'd expect it to be normal again this week on, on the weekend meetings there. Yeah, so a little bit slow, but um, good vibes, Andy, from the Thursday. Everyone really happy, fair track. Um, all six traps winning a heat. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I have no complaints um, per, per se of, of, regarding the track. Um, 99.9% of, of, of those are, are, are seem 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 satisfied and um, certainly the, the racing was good. And what about the, the traps as well? And you've had that switch, um, level playing field now, everyone seems to be happy. Again, yeah, the tra- the, tra- the new traps have been an absolute revelation. Um, i say just a, fa- a fair break for all concerned. And and, and again, no moans and grows about the traps at all. Um, and, and personally, I'm delighted with them. James, on uh, on Thursday, a dog that particularly caught my eye was uh, Ballymac Kingdom. We mentioned the track a little bit slower, 29.54. Um, yeah. He come from off the speed. Was he one that caught your eye? Yeah, he certainly did, and uh, you know he's one sort of edging in towards the wells a little bit. I think he's a bit better drawn, obviously uh, in, in the second round there, so he might benefit from from the red box in in round two. Yeah, and um, it was an interesting night, the opening one, Andy. I mean, a lot of the well fancy dogs did the business, perhaps not as comfortably as we we thought they were going to. Did anything catch the eye? Well, we're just referring back to, to the Ballymac Kingdom dog. That, that for me was when the derby really started. Um, that was one thing. Oh, hello. <laughs> we're on. That was, I think, the third heat, wasn't it? Um, he took up off, off the home stretch. And, and that, that for me was when the derby started. It's, I've been in the, in the zone since then, I think. Um, I think local dogs winning as well uh, over the three three nights. Um, it's all talk of the Irish. We've had seven local toaster winners. Um, Kevin Atten's had a couple. Patrick's a couple. Uh, one for Mark Wallace. Uh, Gary Griffiths. Uh, as Chuck one in there as well, and um, you know, oh Booney, can't forget Booney, <laughs> bet his book as well. So seven local winners uh, as well. Not all about the Irish. No, and a dog that really um, sort of, I don't want to say saves his best because he's won races elsewhere. But Drum Crow Brent for Mark Wallace, um, he's very well backed, and he's a dog that shows that you can certainly be a wide seed and, and win around Toaster. Absolutely, he's gritty. I um, mean, he's won plenty of greater race around Toaster. At one point, he was obviously ungraded, always moved on to better things at open class. And he's been a regular visitor on the open race scene, back with Derby Trail Stakes and whatever. And, and yet, he's again, being a wide runner, he's one of these grounds that will keep qualifying for Mark. I think he's the only one that Mark's actually got left in a competition as well. So I'm sure he'll be keen to keep him going as far as possible. And James, uh, another one for the home team and, and one that I'm sure the locals will be cheering on is the, the Maiden Derby champion, Thorn Falcon. Uh, another yeah, yeah. wide seed doing the business. Yeah, I think he's he's four from four now. Um, only ever run around toaster, but he, he certainly likes the place. Um, and yeah, he, you know, he fancy him to go keep going a long way in the competition. Okay, let's move on then to um, to the Friday and the big guns were all at the the start of the meeting. James, we had um, Toolmaker Sydney beating Knocknable Sid, and of course Glengar Bow beating Ballymac Ariel. What did you make of those two tussles? Yeah, I mean Toolmaker Sydney, not not one you'd expect it to ping great like it did. Um, you know, um, and when it did, it, it was sort of race over. And as good as Knocknable Sid is, it didn't really make an impression um, on Toolmaker Sydney. Whether we can break like that every time is yet to be seen, but but certainly classy off the front. Um, Glengar Bell as well, I think we might be saying it was only its second race this year. So had a bit of a layoff, maybe a little bit more to come as well. Um, beat at the time that the anti-post favourite there, Bally Mac Ariel, um, who, who ran well to qualify in second. So yeah, a good, good tussle there. And one of the, the stories of the first round was the return to the winner's enclosure of Queen Beyonce. And, uh, you know, uh, Rab a real character. And I, I think he certainly enjoyed that as well. Absolutely. I mean, she's, she's the apple of Rab's eye, isn't she? But um, he, he's nursed her back and it was it was lovely to see her win. Um, and, and, and the style she did it as well. She got, she got, got inside him on that second bend and, and 
well, hopefully while she come on for the run as well. Um, obviously, Bocco's belly on the Friday night, that was, that was a good performance of Patrick's as well. He's beginning to live up to the potential. Um, we've all sort of felt that, that, that he's got. And um, group his addition um, for Jim Revens again, perhaps one that slipped under the radar a little bit, but that, that was some run, 29-21, um, 4-10 split as well. Um, Friday was a good night. Yeah, and just a quick word on a, a dog sweep the yard who, who turned up without a trial, no look, and still got the job done, which I thought was really impressive, Andy. Absolutely, and 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 again from 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 a, from a mighty <laughs> a mighty kennel, Mr. Harlan's there. Um, you know he didn't have a bad first round himself, did he? But um, sweep the yard again could improve for the next round. Yeah, and and before we head on to to Saturday, James. Um, the punters out there looking for a profile of dog to latch onto in this year's derby. We, we, we've seen all sorts. We've seen dogs come from off the speed. Um, I thought Luna Rocket was really impressive off the front um, on that, that Friday night. You know, you, I do think you want a strong run in Salt. There's nowhere to hide. It is a stiff four bends, but, you know, anything can win. Yeah, like you say, we've seen it all. You know, we've seen dogs been off the front. We've seen dogs been off the pace. Um, you know, there's, there's some strong running types there that you'd, you'd fancy to, to keep qualifying. Um, you know, at every chance going forward. But yeah, you know, results last week shown throughout the week, you can win from any trap and you can win off the front and, and come off the pace and win. It's been been good racing and it just shows that Coast is a fair track. Yeah, let's move on to, to Saturday then. And we'll start with um, poor old Rocker Smasher who broke down at the, the fourth bend, Andy. Um, just tell me about um, after the race. I know Polly the Vet on, on site is very, very good. Um and also, I know that Nathan Calden's been in touch with Connections since the race. Yeah, obviously, Paul Woodburn, the owner, everyone knows Woody. He's, he's, he's a great character <laughs> throughout the game. Um, but yes, on, on site, we've got Polly. Listen, Polly, I, I, I always said it, and, and, and count the night, she's she a different class. Um, her duty of care to the ground is, is second to none. Um, she obviously patched him up, sent him on his way. And I believe he's been in contact as well with Connections just to uh, uh, keep updated on, on, on how he's coming along. But obviously, best of luck to all connections it, it was it was terrible to see um and, and where it happened in the race as well he was coming to win the race as well he was flying um for it to happen there was, was, was horrific but um listen they were in safe hands in polly um if, if an incident is like that is going to happen then you know at least we have got polly on so but um but yeah but best wishes to connections and and, and i hope to see him back on track soon yeah absolutely um I, w- I will say this i mean the Obviously, the incident's an unfortunate one, and, and any injury or a dog knocked over, whatever it may be, is, is one too many. But something that was quite notable in, in this year's first round, James, is around the first couple of bends, all every single ground stayed on their feet, which, you know, I know there's going to be rough and tumble, and dogs not particularly um, used to the track, got much experience around Toaster. I mean, it is a, a pretty new track, the, the modified Toaster. Um, but great that we had such clean racing around the first couple of bends. Yeah, exactly right. That was good to see. I mean, let's say 32 each, 185 runners and, and, and not one fall. That's, that, that's good to see. Obviously, the, the unfortunate injury there. That, that was the only injury reported throughout the whole the whole Derby Van 1. And out of 185 runners, just the one injury there. Obviously, unfortunate thoughts with connections there. But like I say, on the whole, racing, very clean, very good racing. Yeah, welfare paramount, of course, and uh, we do send our best wishes to Rioja Smasher and all concerned there. Now, still in the headlines on that Saturday night, Andy, was a certain native maestro and some win in, in some style, wasn't it? Yeah, what, what, what can you say? Um, you say that the, the clock was sensational. Um, you can see why he's the one to beat. Um, yeah, there's not a lot to say that hasn't been said about the dog, to be fair. Um, foot perfect. I mean, credit to the second unlock on lock was only three parts of length behind him. But um, certainly you can see why they're all talking about Native Maestro after that. Yeah, and James, beyond Native Maestro, anything catch the eye for you? Sort of around it there, the dog in behind it, unlock on lock. Um, you know, sort of come, come really strong at the end. And, and say Native Maestro has set the pace for the competition 29-10 so far. Um, and unlock on lock, he had the legs a bit off, on, off the last bend onto the run as well. So it certainly went well. Good to see. Obviously, last year's winner did Jet Sydney. They win on the Saturday. The sort of gap gap opened up off the second bend. Then, you know, he, he showed his class again. Um, so yeah, yeah, looking forward to looking forward to the next round. Yeah. Well, before we get on to the um, the next round, just um, tell us a little bit about you guys. Um, it's a two man team in the racing office. Obviously, Andy, you was part of the original Toaster team working under Chris Page. Um, just give us your backstory in Greyhound racing because you guys are the two steering the ship at Toaster. Well, yeah, listen, uh, <laughs> I don't think we've got long enough to, to list, list all the tracks I've been at, but um, 
yeah, listen, I started as a T-boy at Wembley back in the 90s. I've uh, been at Oxford, Peterborough, Coventry, um, Swindon. Uh, yeah, toaster a couple of times. Peterborough as well. Um, been, been all around the hours. I'm an, I'm an old hand. Yeah, uh, James, you're not quite so nomadic as Andy and been here, there and everywhere. Tell us just a little bit about your story. Obviously, your your family steeps in history as well. Yeah, that's it. I mean, Graham Mason's been in my family um, for, for, for generations, you could say. Um, so I've certainly grown up, grown up around grounds all my life. Um, actually got, got my trainer's license. I think I was one of the youngest trainers at the time. At age 21, I was, I was a trainer there. Um, went into racing office at Peterborough. I started off and then, then Henlow and now, now I'm in the racing office at Toaster. And you guys are, are very, very busy. Uh, I mentioned I caught you on a, a day in which you're not racing, um, but we obviously had those three nights of racing. You raced again on Sunday, um, trials on Monday. You raced again on Tuesday. I've caught you on the Wednesday. You must just be on the go at all times, James. Yeah, it's, it's certainly a, a busy schedule now. And uh, I mean, we, we had it easy, didn't we, Andy, a few, a few months back with, with just a few meetings that we had. But yes, it's certainly hotting up now. Look, we're excited to have the derby. Um, and yeah, it's, it's all systems go. And Andy, will you find time to have a shave before the next round of the derby, or are no, you too I thought, busy? I, I thought you'd bring that up. Yeah, no, yeah. Listen, I, I, before the next round, I promise you I will, Dave, and I'll, I'll give you a big sloppy kiss on, on the cheek to, to make sure I'm not bristly, right? You don't need to go that far. Um, right into the um, the second round, then. Um, obviously, a big part of the derby, different to to any other competition, is there is a seeding paddle. You guys, as well as um, commentator and former racing manager at Crayford, Paul Lawrence. Three seeding changes, Coney Wonderland, Jim Star Elusive and Cameco. Um, Rouse to middle, all three of those. Um, and you guys also have the opportunity to do so again after the second round. Are we eyeing up any other dogs? I'm, I'm sure they weren't the only three on the list. How does it work, Andy? Do you sort of speak to connections and say, you know, we, we'll leave you for now, but we are looking at you? Yeah, in fairness to the connections, we're going to list them on here. But yes, set, several sets of connections have been contacted and said, "Listen, uh, next next round, you you were borderline the previous round. You know, give the benefit of the doubt, and you know, can always change it out after the next. But um, it's always an emotive issue. Um, it's always, you know, highly debatable. Um, but ultimately, as the rules stand, you know, um, Arguably, it's not ideal. Um, I think going forward, it needs to be tinkered with. You know, there's been talk of bringing in rails to middle, middle to rails, middle to wide seeds. I think it's got to happen um, because there are so many, uh, you know, within the style in every competition um, that, that, that you know, would benefit by, by you know, middle to rails needs to be in three or, or, or vice versa. You know, and a true rail needs to be in one. But as it stands, we're fairly hamstrung. You know, we have to go by the rules of racing. If you've got a middle to rails dog, you're, you're entitled to enter rails, um, and we have to stand by that. Um, it can be frustrating, but ultimately, um, you know, we have to go with the rules of racing. And um, listen, we, we, we've we've changed three dogs there that were, you know, pretty obvious ne- needed the middle. Um, and uh, yes, there are a few more on our radar that we, you know, continue to have conversations with. And, and and if we, you know, really really feel they need changing, that they will change for the next round. And James, I, I always I always say, you know, it's a, a job that I don't envy anyone working in a racing office, particularly um, a racing manager. And that phone call must be a tricky one, you know, telling people we're actually going to change the seeding of your dog. And in their eyes, you know, you're then, you know, having an impact on potentially their chances in the derby itself. Yeah, that's right. You know, we, you know, we, we try and take all, all the views into account, um, but it's, it's all about, you know, making the right decisions for, for, the, for the competition and, and, and trying to get the racing as clean as possible. And I say we, we've picked out three there that, that we're all sort of strong on, sort of do stick out like a sore thumb, um, that, that we felt strong about the change. And I say we'll, we'll continue to look at the next round and review it again. Yeah, absolutely. And knowing you both, I know one thing you don't want to see is messy racing. Um, so clean racing is is what we all want to see. Um, and hopefully that's what we're going to get onwards into the derby. But we'll look out after the second round, of course, the final um, chance to change any seeding there. Um, right, let's look forward then um, to the, the second round. Um, we're not going to go through all 16 heats, don't worry. Um, but we'll just pick out a couple of races. I mean, in particular, I, I felt the first heat was quite an interesting one. Andy, what do you make of that one? 
well, yeah, there's four, four, four first round winners in there. It, it, it's red up. It's a good way, good way to start. Um, so Ballamac Kingdom, the aforementioned um, Ballamac Kingdom, you know, flew up the home stretch. Jaguar Macy didn't have his all his own way in that, that first round, but, um, you know, he's a class act. Signet Ace was, was, was effortless to, to, to win his first round heat. Uh, and Glenga Bale foot perfect as well. I mean, you can't rule out New and Jacko to be fair. <laughs> he's some dog as well, but um, I just think Signet Ace was, was so, so good in that first round, uh, the 29.42 the clock, but so uh, it was the pace up where where he really sort of uh, highlighted his credentials. I'd, I'd probably go with, with Signet Ace and the fact that he's local as well. We'll stick with the local yokels and uh, go go for, for, for Kevin's in, 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 in there. But that's, it's a red hot way to start and um, sets the tone for the rest of the round. Yeah, I'm in a fortunate position at the moment, James, because you guys have not graded the card, so you can give me your views on Everything who you think is going to win. Exactly. Um, we've mentioned their star-studded opener. Um, what, what catches your eye? Yeah, I mean, Bally Mac Kingdom we talked about earlier, obviously, was eye, eye-catching there in the first round. As Andy says, they're four heat winners. I think a length and a half covers the, the field if, if you go on times of the first round there. Um, Bally Mac Kingdom, I just wonder if there might be a, a, a fair bit of early in this race where he could find himself, you know, with, with two or three to pass. And, Dogs in front of him, like, you know, Jaguar Mace, Sonic Ace, Glengar Bale. Is, is he going to come past him? I think Glengar Bale will be the one for me in, in this first heat. Um, I say, say earlier, only the second one this year, maybe a little bit more to come as well. So if, if he pings out like he did last time, um, I'd say he'd have every chance in there again. And what are we thinking? That the, a lot of these Irish dogs are, are undercooked? That's a phrase used quite a lot, Andy. Lots more to come from them? I think you could say, safely assume, yeah, uh, in, in, in the main part. Why not? Um, yeah, I mean, some of them, uh, I don't know say, say one trial but before going straight into the derby. So I think it's fair to say, yeah, I think the Ballamax had a couple of trials, didn't they? But uh, um, yeah, listen, it, it's frightening really because they've been pre- pretty darn good in the first round, but how good could they be going forward? But uh, yeah, I, it's fair to assume more to come. Yeah, and, and as you say, it is frightening because we moved to, to Heat 4. Um, and if there's more to come from Native Maestro, then the rest are in big, big trouble. Um, he obviously put 29-10 up on the board. Looks like a good draw, doesn't it, James, on the inside again? Yeah, he's, he's got his red box again. Uh, again, he looks like he's he's fine out of one like he was last time. And, yeah, 29-10, just two spots off the track record there. So you, you fancy that going going sometime soon, do you think, Dave? Uh, well, you guys tell me. I mean, there's a lot of talk. There was a market with the sponsors as well about, you know, what the fastest time was going to be. Um, the, the track record breaking was almost a given. What, what are your thoughts on that, James? Because... You know, it didn't look obvious like it was going to happen, particularly on the Thursday last week. Yeah, I, th- I think I think it might go. Um, so still, still, still fairly new circuit in it toaster, and yeah, I think as as the competition heats up, I, I, I think the track record may go. Yeah, I think it might be dipping under twenty nine personally. Do you agree with that, Andy? Yeah, I don't see why not. As we said, potential um, improvement to come from, from from a lot of the Irish dogs. I think it's probably a no brainer. Will happen, yeah. And thoughts on Native Maestro? Um, he's going to be tough to beat, isn't he, in the second round? Yeah, he just oozes class, doesn't he? Um, I'm sure Boone is better. His book will be looking to, to to give him a run, but you know, I, I think you can't, you can't, cannot oppose, cannot oppose. Certainly on that first round look. Absolutely right. Let's jump forward then to uh, the Saturday in Heat 12 because this is a, a belter as well. We've got Roxanne Shake on the inside. Um, John Do It Bomber, I thought was an eye catcher for Paul Burr. Lentz and Bocco in four, Priceless Jet in six. James, Lentz and Bocco, um, have Connection said much to you guys about, you know, he's a bit of a surprise turn up. Um, he's, he's come back, 2019 Irish Derby champion out of retirement. And there's plenty of life in the old dog yet, by the looks of it. Yeah, it seems so. As Andy alluded to earlier, Graham Allen, that's six, six heat winners in the first round and, and a runner-up, I think, out of nine entries. So they've got, got seven through, certainly a kennel on form. Um, you know, they'd, they'd fancy their chances going forward with, with, with the seven three. You think? Yeah. What What are your thoughts on Heat Twelve, Andy? Well, obviously, listen. Let, let some Bocco's a play. You, you never know. He's been away. Have you? He's, he's been sensational. I, I do like Rock Song Shake. Um, I think it probably put the race face of the race on the inside. But Priceless Jet is obviously a former track record holder, but he's such a clever dog. You know, he, he finds the gaps, goes from. Um, you know, I am a Priceless Jet fan. I'm not 100 sure he needs wide wide. Um, but uh, I think if he sees a gap, they go for it. Um, but he's intelligent, intelligent ground, isn't he? But um, I, th- I think the way they set up probably probably rocks on shake to get to get clear early doors and, and maybe hold on, keep keep the big guns at bay. And a quick word on the wides, James. Um, they're quite thin on the ground already. The equal distribution, um, you know, they're almost guaranteed 
stripes in every race now and the punters out there should maybe take take that on board if you can latch on to a decent wide they're going to get their draw every round aren't they yeah that's it i think we've got well we did get 16 through this time so it's so a one round in each heat um which is not too bad like and says their priceless jet he's a sort of dog he, he can break from six if if if, if he leads he, he'll be sort of edging in but i think he, he kept a fairly level lineup last week um priceless jet he, he can do it both ways as well he, he can lead and he can come from behind um let's say clever dog you know he'd, he'd have a chance of keep qualifying you think yeah well, let's move forward then to a, a race that i'm really looking forward to to, to seeing which is heat 14 um ballymac wild in one toolmaker sydney in two great name that in three form rebel in four shortwood in five swift edition in six and and three Big, big guns, Andy, on the inside here in, in Ballymac Wild, Toolmaker Sydney, and great name that. Yeah, I mean, Toolmaker Sydney, he, he obviously took a shine to the track most recent, 29 13 o'clock, 4 18 split. Again, uh, could get away early. I think, I mean, Ballymac Wild's probably more, more of a stayer, but sure to be um, catching him close home. Great name that. Couldn't quite get away from, from Drum Drake Bruno in that, in that first round. Um, but again, you think there's, there's, there's you know, more to come uh, from on that performance. But uh, if you can break it like you did in that first round until Mega Sydney, I think it'll take all the beating. Yeah, I'd like to think it wasn't a flash in the pan, James, the uh, Tormaker Sydney dog breaking that. I mean, he's not renowned for being a trappy dog. He's got massive middle. Um, and, and as Andy says, if he finds a start like that again, it, you know, he's going to be a big player in this derby, isn't it, all the yeah, way through? Um, yeah, I mean, it, the, the race before um, the, the trail stakes there, he sort of looks after himself a little bit around the first bend where he didn't break in front, but Last week there in, in the first round, he was devastating uh, when, when, when he let out. So even not the ball Sid behind him, as good a dog as he is, he, he never made any impression at all. Um, so that, that was definitely eye-catching. And if, if Sydney can get, get first break again, it, it, it'd be certainly nothing coming past it, wouldn't I thought? I agree with that. Right, let's move on then to Heat 15, because the defending champion, uh, DJ Sydney, um, lines up in the second round. Tempin, one of the UK Hopes um, on the inside in trap one. Great Eastern in three. All about Ted in four. Bubbly Jubbly in five. And Troy Firebird in six. He'll need to be on his toes here, Andy, won't he, um, dear Jet Sydney? Well, this is true. Obviously, Ten Pin, I think, is probably due one of his better breaks um, and drawn on the inside. I just think Ten Pin could get away. Um, it could be very interesting and down the far side if Sydney gets after him. But um, let's say Ten Pin is no slouch himself. I, I think Ten Pin could get the run of the race here. Yeah, you'll have to tread carefully, won't you? I mean, Tempin, a 37-kilo dog, Dear Jet Sydney weighed in 32.8. So, a big obstacle on his inside, James. Yeah, I mean, this heat there, I'd, I'd probably fancy three dog there to lead Great Eastern. I think, you know, he's got a good good, good break out of him from three. Probably be whatever turns handy out of the top two might might catch him for me. And I'd, I'd probably edge with Tempin. Um, it's like I say, he's slowly getting better. He he's, he's seems to be improving with each one round toaster. So, I think he's... He's, he's, he's due a win, Tempin. I think this could be the, the time for him. Yeah, something quite interesting that you, you said there, James, a, a good break out of three. Um, a lot of tracks and a lot of set of boxes lend themselves to a, um, a draw down the middle for a fast start. Is that something that you feel at Toaster? Not necessarily. I mean, I've seen, seen dogs lead from all traps. Um, you know, I just think Great Eastern, it was, it was more the dog himself. I think he, he can lead out of three in this race. One and two are not always that that hot out of the traps, and uh, that's just how I see this race panning out three to lead and, and one or two to, to sit in behind it and maybe get him late on. Now, because you obviously were at Peterborough, weren't, weren't you? And, and these are the old Peterborough boxes, and I know the ones that we're using for the Derby are actually the, the six Ben traps, the 620. Um, but there was, you know, talk to all the, the locals at Peterborough, and they would say, oh, you can't break from the, the inside. Is that not something that you particularly agree with? No, I don't think so. I mean, whether it was more Peterborough, I think it was more the run to the bend and, and being a tight bend. Um, the folk at Peterborough used to like more of a middle runner that, that pace up and cut in at the bend a little bit like Romford. They used to say that that was a track three was a pin box at Romford, I guess. Um, but no, a close lot, I think. I, I haven't seen any track bias whatsoever, to be honest. I think I think it's a, it's, it's a fair, fair run for all of them, to be honest, yeah. You agree with all that, Andy? Yeah, like saying, with a new set of traps, I, I think it had made a, a heck of a difference. Um, yeah, listen. Level playing the field is all anyone wants. I think we've got that now. I think the first the, the, the first first three nights of the first round showed that. Um, like I said, they won from every trap. Very little bother at the bend as well. I think it's uh, you know it's fair for everyone. And um, yeah, very much looking forward to the next round now. Yeah, and something. I mean, I've I've gone and looked at other tracks, and it's noticeable as well. Um, but a little bit of movement in the traps. I think particularly if if a dog 
charges the boxes. They really seem to to move these new traps, Andy. Yeah, they, listen, they, 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 nothing's perfect. Um, certainly, it's better, but um, they do seem to perhaps rock back a little bit. But um, listen, as far as as far as the race is concerned, it, it's it's same for all six, and and uh, yeah, nothing 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 will be concerned about, and it is a level playing field for all. Absolutely, and I'm sure if there is any issue, it will be uh, tackled as it was with the, the traps originally as well. Right then, uh, the final heat of the second round um, is a very interesting one, and surely James is going to be one for the home team here because there isn't an Irish trained runner in it. Um, we've got Troopers Edition in one, Fura Max in two, Cold as Ice, a dog who I'm interested in, in, in three, Savannah Domino in four, Chelms Prince in five, and Thorn Falcon in six. A good chance of... Uh, a locally trained winner as well, probably, here, James? I think so. You know, I, I like Thorn Falcon. Um, obviously, what we've seen of him so far, he hasn't put a foot wrong. Again, another dog he's shown he, he can do it from the front and he can also pass dogs as well. He, cer he certainly likes Toaster, four from four round here. Good to see Savannah Domino get, get a win there and, and get through for the governor. Um, come out there. The sales, I think, you know, I might say, yeah, and uh, yeah, good, good to see that one through. But yeah, it'd be Thorn Falcon for me in here. Um, you know, he's, he showed his class out. Still, still a young dog. Still fairly experienced and, and, and open to improvement himself, you'd have to say, you know. Yeah, one for the home team here, Andy, in, in stripes, particularly Thorn Falcon. He's one of the shortest priced runners in the outright book, trained in the UK. Yeah, and he's one of the standouts of the first round, as was Drooper's edition. So it's, it's nice that they can uh, sort of bookend the the, 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 the derby for this final round with, with a, what should be a, a, a thriller. Um, if, James, if James is going for Thorn Falcon, I'll, I'll go with Drooper's edition. Um, uh, so they would say two of the standout runs performances from the first round uh locking on again and you know take your pick and as, as uh, james says yeah good to see savannah domino in there as well keep big kev happy exactly right well i will push you all both for a winner of this year's derby i'm sure it might change as we go along we plan to, to chat between rounds um but i just want to talk about the the derby itself um you're obviously you know as i mentioned andy you worked under chris page one of his assistants uh, you're now joined with james in charge at your track it must be something to be proud of and a, a, an honor i'm sure you know it doesn't get any bigger than the derby it, it's an odd bit it's a bit like christmas i think i think i'll start enjoying it when, when it's over um the build-up has been uh intense with all, all the trial sessions we had um you know it was trials after trials after trials and obviously the, the, the maiden derby came just ahead of the derby itself as well so the wilderness well for trialing um it, it was sort of a relief that the calm before the storm when we got the draw done for that first round and obviously didn't try on, on on the three nights as well so uh, it's calmed down a bit but um listen it, it, it's it's been hectic um i wouldn't be lying to say uh I'll, I'll be i'll be glad when it's over but in a nice way i'll enjoy it while i can and probably sit back and reflect but while it's on it's uh, it's all hands to the pump yeah i'll ask you the, the same james and just to touch on what andy mentioned there, i know you guys you know if someone wanted a, a solo trial you gave it to them oh yeah we're, we're, we're very accommodating on that very helpful um i think we've We've had weeks in, in, in the past month or so in the lead up to the derby where we've been trialling sort of five, six days a week. We've, we've been putting plenty of trial sessions on, plenty of opportunity for the trainers there to come and have a look. We're always accommodating in that way. Um, like I say, it's, it's very exciting. We're obviously, very glad to have the derby. It's, it's, it's a good experience. Good to have, um, you know, start to get crowds back in as well now. A bit of atmosphere again makes all the difference. That's something that we've obviously missed for a long time now. And it, it's, it's so good to have, to have that crowd back in and, and, and get the atmosphere going again. Yeah, fantastic. Do try and get yourself to Toaster at some point during this year's Derby. And of course, if you can't, uh, you can watch all the action, every race of every round live on Racing Post Greyhound TV. Right, come on then, Andy. Um, who's it going to be uh, from what we've seen so far? You guys have no excuses. You've seen all the trials. You've seen all the races. Uh, what are your thoughts? Who's going to be winning it this year? Well, 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 um, listen, it, it, can I sit on the fence? It's too early to, to, to say, but um, from first round performances, uh, I've alluded to it before, I, I was a big fan of, of Drooper's edition. Um, so the clock was good, the, the pace up was good, a uh, bit of an all rounder. So, yeah, why not for, for, for Jim Revens and, and, and Ernie Gaskin? Uh, I'll go with Drooper's edition. Yeah, great scenes after that as well. It's still a big price as well, uh, Drooper's edition. Remember, um, each way terms, still quarter of the odds first six home. Um, James, are you going to nail your colours to the mast for anything uh, yeah, at the yeah, moment? Well, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be big on, on calling it this early again. Like Andy, I, I wouldn't be an anti-post player really at this stage. But from what we've seen of Nate my show, I'm going to be boring. I know, he, I know he's gone in now as anti-post favourite, but I, I, you know, on what we've seen so far, um, you know, he looks the pick of the bunch. But say, a long, long way to go yet. 
Well, a long way to go, and we're going to enjoy it as well. And uh, best of luck to you both steering the ship during this year's derby. As I mentioned, you're both very, very busy. Um, so I appreciate your time in particular. Um, so thank you to James and Andy. This has been the Racing Office Opinion on this year's Greyhound Derby.